President Tinubu presents 27.5 trillion Naira 2024 budget of renewed hope to Joint National Assembly. Again, bandits attack Taraba community, kill 18 hunters. Supreme Court rules that old and new Naira notes will coexist till further notice. And the foreign scene death toll from El Nino floods in Kenya rises to 120. These are the headlines on Trust TV News Update at this hour. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for joining. President Bola Tinubu on Wednesday made his first budget presentation before a joint session of the National Assembly. Presenting the 2024 Appropriation Bill to Parliament, President Tinubu unveiled a budget estimate of 27.5 trillion naira. The report. To ask the budget of renewed hope, President Tinubu said the estimate is predicated on a crude oil benchmark price of $77.96 per barrel daily oil production of 1.76 million barrels per day and an exchange rate of 750 naira to a dollar for the year 2024 fiscal year. According to the President, the 27.50 trillion budget proposed expenditure reflects the serious challenges faced by Nigeria and contains key reforms necessary to address them. Given a breakdown of the budget, the president said 9.92 trillion naira is for non debt recurrent expenditure, 8.25 trillion naira for debt servicing. Capital expenditure stands at 8.7 trillion naira, while the budget deficit is projected at 9.18 trillion naira. The president said the 2024 budget deficit will be financed by mainly new borrowings. We have adopted a conservative oil price benchmark of 77.96 US dollar per barrel and daily oil production estimate of 1.78 million barrels per day. We have also adopted a Naira to US dollar exchange rate of 750 per US dollar for 2024. Tinubu said the 2024 budget of Renewed Hope was designed to address critical issues and to grow the country's economy and end its security challenges during the next fiscal year. The 2024 appropriation has been themed Budget of Renewed Hope. The proposed budget seeks to achieve job-rich economic growth, macroeconomic stability, a better investment environment, enhanced human capital development, as well as poverty reduction and greater access to social security. President of the Senate, Kosila Kwabio, in his remarks, commended the development plans of President Tinubu's administration for the country saying Nigeria has never had such audacious plans since the days of the nation's founding fathers. We need to acknowledge the specific achievements of the President Bolamed Tinubu's administration so far. Those who doubted him initially forgot his track record as the governor of Lagos State from 1999 to the year 2007. And Lagos, of course, is the Nigeria's melting pot. Nigerians strongly believe that with a dead profile of the day today, that you are the man for the job to fix our economy. In view of this and the related challenge of high level of public debt, the National Assembly will ensure that the 2024 budget includes concrete strategies for sustainable debt management, including measures to increase revenue and control expenditure. The budget, which is expected to be approved and take effect in January 2024, is Nigeria's highest ever and prioritizing fiscal sustainability, economic growth, and security. Rashidat Yusuf for Trust TV News. 
And on security matters, bandits have killed 18 hunters in separate attacks in Bali local government area of Taraba State. Reports say that the hunters were killed during a face-to-face -face confrontation with bandits at a mountain area near uh, Maihula town on Tuesday. It was gathered that the bandits numbering about uh, mon numbering more than 200 attempted to launch an attack on the headquarters of Bali local government area and other surrounding villages but were confronted by hunters. A source in the area, Musa Umar, said that 14 hunters were killed at the scene of the fight while several others were wounded. He added that one of the injured hunters died on the way to the Jalingo Hospital, bringing the number of uh, number to 15. Now, the Taraba State Chairman of Hunters Association, Adamu Antala, confirmed the killing of 15 of his members during an encounter with bandits. He said that the bandits also ambushed his members near uh, Dhaka town in Bali local government area and killed three other hunters. The, police, uh, the state police command is yet to confirm the incident. On a political matters, supporters of the new Nigeria People's Party are out on the streets of Kano to protest against the outcome of the judgment of the appeal court regarding the state governorship election. The protesters are demanding that the Supreme Court should ensure justice ahead of the ruling. The protesters believe that the appeal court did not follow due process in making its judgment, which affirmed Nasuru Gauna of the All Progressives Congress as the winner of the election. Trust TV correspondent Idris Debrin gathered that the protesters are going round the major streets of Kano. This is peaceful protest. We are here to show our anger with the outcome of the judgment of the appeal court. The appeal court has sacked our governor, the governor that we have voted. So we are here to show our anger. Therefore, we are here till the justice is being prevailed. The constitution gives us the right to do this, and we are doing it, and we know that the government at the top, and we are sure that the Supreme Court judge will do the best. Our specific demand is for our right to be bestowed, our governor to be returned. We have voted for him. All the world knows that he has gotten more than one million votes, and that is the democracy. Democracy is the government for the people, by the people, by the, of the people. And we are voted out. We are voted out. We are voted in. So he should be. He should remain in power till 2027. In the meantime, the police in Kano State on Wednesday said one person died when two rival groups clashed at Kurunang Asabe, Fage local government area of the state. The police commissioner Hussein Gumel confirmed the incident on Wednesday in Kano. Now, Gumel said that the command deployed its operatives to the scene soon after it received a distress call from a good Samaritan that two rival groups in Corona Asabe were having a physical confrontation. Now, he said that though the police officers immediately restored normalcy in the area, one person eventually died from the clash. Gumel reiterated the command's ban on unauthorized processions and political gatherings, among others. Benway State Command of the Nigeria Police says it has arrested no fewer than 20 suspected criminals in the state. The command's public relations officer, S.P. Sewesi Annene, said this in a statement on Wednesday in Makurudi, Benway State. Annene said that the arrested suspects were involved in different criminal activities that ranged from money rituals and illegal gun running to armed robbery. He added that the command's operatives also recovered seven locally fabricated pistols and a motorcycle from the suspects. He said the suspects were arrested during a police raid on their hideout along Adigbo Vandekia Road following a tip-off. And he added that the command also arrested two suspected armed robbers after their victim, one Misak Eke of Ugondo district, Makurdi reported the matter at E Police Division. The lawmaker representing Haradawa constituency Babayo Akuyam has been re-elected as the has been elected rather as the new speaker of the Bochi State House of Assembly. 
The parliament also elected Ahmed Abdullahi, the lawmaker representing this constituency in this local government area, as deputy speaker. Wednesday's election comes barely five days after the appeal court in Bochi sacked the then speaker, Abubakar Suleiman, as member representing Ningi Central constituency. In its ruling last week Friday, the appellate court also ordered a rerun in 10 polling units in Ningi Central constituency, creating a vacuum in the speakership position as Abubakar Suleiman stepped down as speaker of the 10th assembly. The new deputy speaker replaces Jamil Ahiru of Bochi Central constituency, who was also sacked by the Court of Appeal, which ordered a rerun election in nine polling units in the constituency. Both of them were elected through a consensus vote and have been sworn in. The Supreme Court on Wednesday ordered the old 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes should continue to coexist with the new notes till further notice. In the fresh application by the Attorney General of the Federation, Latif Fagwemi, said due to the prevailing economic crisis, it has not been able to print the volume of new notes that will enable it face out old currency notes before December 31. Delivering the judgment, the seven-member panel led by Justice Inyang Okoro said both old and new Naira notes should continue to remain legal tender until the federal government put a process in place for its replacement or redesign it a redesign after due consultation with the relevant stakeholders. It will be recalled that in March 2023, the federal government had extended the deadline to phase out old narrow notes to 31 December 2023, while on November 21, the federal government had filed an application before the Supreme Court seeking an extension of the deadline. The Plateau State High Court 11 presided over by Justice Nankwat Dawat Shashet on Wednesday remanded two suspected organ harvesters, Noah Kekiri and Yusuf Abdullahi, at the Joss Correctional Center for allegedly removing left kidney of one Ibrahim Ejibadi in 2019. This is coming almost a month after the said suspect were remanded by Justice DG Fombing on alleged kidnap kidney uh, harvesting of one candy kamaru in 2018. The report. On Wednesday, the suspect were remanded again for allegedly removing the kidney of another patient after their arraignment at the court by Andrew Yinnan, an assistant chief counsel with the State Ministry of Justice. Kekele was arrested by the police for alleged kidney harvest at his Murna Clinic and Maternity located at Enshanu community of Josno local government area of the state. In suit before Justice Shashit, between the people of Plateau State and Noah Kekiri and Yusuf Abdullahi, the state government in the four-count charge accused the defendants of criminal conspiracy, culpable homicide, causing grievous hurt and removing, selling and trafficking of the kidney of Ibrahim Ejibadi. The charges according to the state government include criminal conspiracy, contrary to Section 5.8 and punishable under Section 5.9 of the Plateau State Penal Court Law 2017, attempted culpable homicide, contrary to and punishable under Section 198, subsection 1 of the Plateau State Penal Court 2017, causing grievous hurt by endangering the life of others, contrary to Section 215C and G of the Plateau State Penal Court Law 2017 and dealing in human beings contrary to and punishable under Section 253, subsection 1 of the Plateau State Penal Court Law 2017. After reading the charges, the suspect pleaded not guilty. The defense counsel, led by E.A. Achoba, informed the court of their bail application, arguing that the offense suspected to have been committed were all bailable, and an accused person was presumed innocent until proven guilty. But the prosecution counsel opposed the bail application on the grounds that the offense were grievous. Well, what happened today in court uh, is uh, the arraignment of the two defendants. 
in respect to the four count charge that we filed against them. They pleaded not guilty to the charge. Their lawyers filed a bail application, which we filed a counter. It was argued. And the ruling on the bail application has been resolved on a date to be communicated to both councils by the court. After hearing the submissions of the lawyers, Justice Shashed, however, remanded the suspect and reserved date for ruling on the bail application. Ado Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Coming up shortly. We'll take a look at how modern farming methods can address climate change issues, improve yield. Details and more after the break. That's right, you too could be one of the 20 Zenit Bank customers that will win 150,000 Naira every two weeks from June 1st, 2023 until May 31st, 2024 in the Zenith Better Life Promo 3. To qualify, simply open a Zenith Bank account. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Live the better life with Zenith Bank. Hello and welcome to Creative Lounge on Trust TV. My name is Ahmed Mohammed Bello and I'm going to be taking you through my journey as an artist. Thanks for staying with us. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Here's a reminder of our top stories. President Tinubu presents 27.5 trillion Naira 2024 budget of renewed hope to joint National Assembly. Plus, again, bandits attack Taraba community, kill 18 hunters. In other news, stakeholders in Nigeria's industrial sector have identified architectural engineering as one of the sectors that have potentials to turn around Nigeria's economy if properly harnessed. Speaking with Trust TV's Abdurrahman on the sidelines of Nigeria's continued reliant on foreign nations for local consumption, they opine that in the face of rising inflation occasioned by the subsidy removal, that a diversified economy that supports other sectors is the panacea to Nigeria's economic woes. In a country with over 200 million people and blessed with abundant natural and human resources, Nigeria has continued to remain a consuming nation that relies on foreign commodities rather than producing what to consume. What is the fate, what will be the fate of Nigeria if Nigeria does not upstage its production capacity right now through industrialization. Now we have signed, that means that there must be accelerated industrialization. For us to be able to produce part of what will be in the market. If you start any manufacturing system, you find difficulty in the sense that you will not be able to produce to the quality because our people are very impatient and if you want to sell in a competitive market your product must be to the international standard of quality and also safety ensuring the implementation of viable policies that will ensure the revitalization of industries in the country is among the many solutions put forward by stakeholders you see the, my recommendation is that government should be more serious in supporting education in nigeria 
the facilities that are required, just like the industrial are complaining of infrastructure, so also in the universities. You need equipment, you need running costs, you need laboratories, you need lecture rooms, and so on and so forth. All these are very essential for you to be able to do that. You also need qualified lecturers. While the country continues to battle with high cost of living, especially brought about by the removal of fuel subsidy, experts believe that one of the many sectors in the country that has a great potential is architectural engineering. Especially consumables and other things and uh, food stuff are very high. In fact, in terms of inflation, that's why we have a lot of uh, issues today, that our inflation has gone high. But we require this synergy between the uh, industries, manufacturers, the engineers and the academia, so that if we can collaborate, we'll be able to have what we call synergy and get the right raw materials, the right production, the right research, uh, researches to produce what we require today in Nigeria. According to them, with a holistic approach that involves both public and private sectors, the industry can lead Nigeria towards prosperity once more. Abdurrahman Umar, Trust TV News, Abuja. Experts in the agricultural sector have urged farmers in Benue State to embrace modern methods of farming as part of efforts to mitigate the effects of climate change on agriculture. According to them, this switch from old to new farming methods will lead to improved yield and better empower the farmers economically. Jimmy Azande reports. One of the basic approaches they said it's for the Benue State farmers to begin to practice irrigation farming for commercial purposes, as this is one of the ways in which modern commercial agriculture thrives. But with dry season farming, we are expecting that uh, that gap will be filled. People are going to produce out of season. And uh, if that continues, you understand, we shall no longer rely on rain fed agriculture, but we we'll go into irrigation farming. Apart from the irrigation method, the agricultural experts also said there are many other options the farmers can explore for maximum profit, like using highly mechanized technology. It's no longer time to fold hands. Something has to be done. And the government on their own side are doing something, especially in the area of regenerative agriculture. Something is going on with the Federal Minister of Agriculture. Something is also going on in the Ecological Organic Agriculture Initiative, Nigeria. Uh, private sector too are key in because there is need to drive down the advocacy on regenerative agriculture, organic agriculture, down to the grassroots. Despite all these suggestions, Benwe Farmer said only the government can engender growth in the sector by providing the enabling environment for them. I think it will be done and it will help the, the masses. What I mean by the masses is generally with farmers. Government should intervene to help. They will give support. If not, there will be hunger. In recent times, farmers have been lamenting low yields, which as per se are some of the effects of environmental degradation caused by natural and human factors. To address this, as passing the agricultural value chain say, modern agricultural methods must replace old practices that have been in use for far too long. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. The Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation has established a special desk at the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to strengthen the investigation and prosecution of parties responsible for bank failures. The Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, NDIC, Bello Hassan, disclosed this at the 2023 NDIC workshop organized for business editors and members of the Finance Cor Correspondents Association of Nigeria on Wednesday in Oweri. The conference has the theme, Stock Taking of Deposit Insurance Practice, Assessing the Now, Evaluating the Challenges and Forecasting the Future. Hassan said that the dedicated desk at the EFCC will enable closer collaboration and coordination between the two agencies facilitating the exchange of information, expertise and resources. This synergy, he said, is crucial for ensuring that cases involving bank failures 
were thoroughly investigated while those responsible are brought to justice. He also said that the corporation had introduced the single customer view framework to enhance speedy payment of insured sums to depositors of closed banks. President Bola Tinubu on Wednesday departed Abuja, Nigeria for Dubai, United Arab Emirates, where he is expected to attend the COP28 Climate Summit. Recall that the President's special advisor on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngilali, had hinted on Tuesday that Tinubu will be traveling for the summit. Ngilali had in the statement said that Tinubu, who will participate in the World Leaders Summit on December 1 and 2, 2023, will deliver a national statement highlighting Nigeria's stance on various thematic issues, including renewable energy and climate financing. According to him, the president's message will also focus on holding businesses and institutions accountable, reflecting Nigeria's dedication to sustainable and responsible practices. While in Dubai, President Tinubu will actively participate in key sideline events, which will further support the advancement of his avowed commitment to aggressively attract foreign direct investment for enhanced wealth creation and revenue expansion in the country, in addition to other events hosted by the Nigerian delegation. And away from Nigeria, the death toll from weeks of relentless rain and ensuing floods has nearly doubled. In Kenya, Interior Minister Raymond Amolo announced on Tuesday that at least 120 lives have been lost with nearly 90,000 households displaced and forced to seek refuge in 120 makeshift camps. The incessant rain and flash floods besieging the country are attributed to the El Nino weather phenomenon, compounding the challenges a region already reeling from a severe drought faces. Kenya's weather forecasting agency projects that the heavy rains are likely to persist until January 2024. Kenyan President William Ruto has pledged financial support for the affected areas, acknowledging the widespread impact on lives, infrastructure and property. A statement from Ruto's office cited the unfortunate consequences of El Nino-induced precipit precipitation, including disease outbreaks and prolonged uh, power outages across Kenya and the Eastern Africa region. And in sports news, Manchester City striker Erling Haaland on Tuesday set a new UEFA Champions League record after he scored a goal in his side's 3-2 win over RB Leipzig. Haaland's goal against RB Leipzig was his 40th in the Champions League. The Norway international needed just 35 matches to get to the landmark. As a result of his latest strike, he became the youngest player ever to score 40 Champions League goals in just 35 games. He surpassed former Manchester United striker Ruud Van, who had taken 45 games to get there. Haaland also uh, broke his contemporary Kylian Mbappe's record. Mbappe is third fastest, taking 59 matches, while two of the finest goal scorers of the modern era, Lionel Messi and Robert Lewandowski needed 61 games each. And that's a wrap on the news update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for watching.